And from that cliffhanger, I want to start on something else. Because, uh, like always, I came here to my dad's shop and I uh, got immediately busy working on the CRX. <laughs> so, let me show you a few updates right quick before we get into the CRX stuff. I got some new wheels. So, they're the Indy Sport SGs, or the tires. The wheels are actually mini, as you can tell, the mini phone dials, which are very lightweight and very cool. Uh, so I had a local friend who actually had these for sale, and he, uh, he didn't need them for the new build he's going with. And he said, hey man, you want to come buy these? And I said, I am on my way. So thank you, Rick, for these. These are going to work very well. And actually, the plan right now is to use these on the Fiesta. So I already have two SGs, but uh, I had plans on buying two more to finish that out. So I just skipped a step and got four all together. So there we go. But the cool thing is with the mini wheel, those will fit on the CRX. So if you see where I'm connecting the dots here, I can slap those on the CRX at any point in time also if I wanted to. That's why I'm gonna make a quick mention that I'm really proud of my dad. He actually buckled down and uh, has really got to work. He's been tearing apart this K24A4 uh, out of the element, kind of learning, and he's gonna start swapping the head over to that A2 head that he got. But he decided to just uh, abandon that plan and go pick up a K24A2 from Dallas because they, they got a couple there that are uh, ready to go, just plug and play, ready to start up and go. But what makes me more proud is what's under here. Look at this. Here's the new flywheel and everything. This is the adapter flywheel for a K20, K24 to a 350Z transmission. So this my friends is a brand new from nissan 350z trans i forget what the code is but you guys know it if you guys are in disease but this is killer it's brand new it has not as not a single mile on it i want to i forget what he actually paid for but it's a really killer price and it's here it's all ready to go no junkyard stuff no nothing it's a uh, hundred percent brand new and here's the k the uh, adapter plate you can see here k20 350z 370z that's crazy. So he's really, he's really picking it up and he's getting ready to start the, uh, the swap this winter for the 280Z. So with that all said, we were had to roll the 280 out to do some, he's gonna end up painting the dump truck over the next couple weeks. So the 280's out. But I just wanna give a little update on that because I haven't talked about that in a while either. Da -da 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 -da. Power on. Now that to me sounds like a nice healthy motor. It's turning over. Uh, I was gonna spray some ether in there and I did spray ether in there. And then I started thinking about, oh yeah, there's no spark. There's no nothing because the ECU is completely blank. There's no tune on there. There's no nothing loaded up. So uh, your boy uh, made a grievous mistake and forgot his laptop back at the house. So I'm gonna try to use dad's laptop and uh, get the Haltech software and get a base map at least loaded up to it and see if we can get this thing to crank over. So I don't have any fuel lines, I don't have a fuel tank, I don't have a fuel pump or filter. If I can get it to bump over with uh, starter fluid, with ether, I'll get the uh, fuel stuff taken out care of real quick. At the junkyard, I came across some absolute gold. I found these two axles, and these are from a base model RSX. Now, if you know anything about case swaps, these are very, very, very valuable. And I found one in the back, in the trunk of the RSX. And then I found one that was laying still in the subframe. And I thought the boots were all good, but this one actually has a little, a little rip in it here. You can see some of the schmoo came out. Not a big deal. I went ahead and tried out the Element half shaft, and it does fit up to the Element half shaft, which is killer news. That helps me out a lot. But the only problem is with the CRX, the, uh, I guess the hubs, I guess whatever hubs they did, they, they, I, the person I got it from was needing to get the hubs for their car. And I think they swapped it out with something else they had. I'm not sure, but uh, it's definitely the, the bigger spline that's in the CRX because these should work with the CRX front hubs. And I don't think those are, I think those are DA or there's, there's something different about those. So what I'll have to do is get new front hubs 
but that's not a big deal. That's no big deal at all. Pick and pull actually has two CRXs right now. And I've been thinking about going and grabbing those, those knuckles and swapping those out with those. No big deal. No, no nothing hard at all. I've done that a million times with the, the wagon. So I may end up doing that. We'll see about that. One quick wagon update. I know this isn't a wagon video <clears throat> per se, but I got all my stuff to do my 1310 U joint. Uh, for, I, so what I understand is this one will work with the flange, but they have to do something with the inside stuff. So I'll, when I get to that bridge, I'll cross it. And I'll take you guys along with me on that one. Uh, a couple more updates. I'm sorry it's so talky in this video. So I got this out of the junkyard. This is out of an Accord. Uh, this is just the Accord plastic shift K or shift, shift stuff. But it, came, it had the cable still there. So I wanted to head and go and try that. Preliminarily going through the gears, I felt all the gears plus reverse. So I think that works fine. But I also have the uh, early Accord metal one. So I'll probably end up using that, and it comes with the, uh, the Hasport uh, plate here with the provision for an uh, e-brake handle, the big giant e-brake for drag racing. Uh, I don't know. I'm not quite to that point yet where I'll be driving it. I want to kind of take on one task at a time. So if I can get it started to get it cranked over, then I'll start pursuing more things down the line. But for right now, I'm going to keep focusing on just getting it started and make sure that it's uh, all ready to go that way. And then I got some more stuff to talk about, because of course I do. So, if you know CRXs, you know the EF chassis, you know that it's got a cable uh, clutch. Well, you have to do a cable to hydro conversion at some point to get this thing to, uh, to work together, to be copacetic. And in order to do that, you can buy the kits. See, there's a lot of bolt-on kits. Hasport has a really great kit, but they're all pretty pricey. I, I forget the price off the top of my head, but it's around 200 maybe more than that. And uh, I started looking at it, and I was like, I can probably build that. And I've heard people do DIYs and stuff like that. So if you see this, I'm going to make my own DIY bracket. Now, I have it all in my head how it's going to work, but I've actually got to pull the clutch, I'll pull the pedal assembly out and actually build it myself. And I'll, I'll show, of course, show you how I'll do that. I think it's going to work just fine. And uh, props to dad also on this idea to go ahead and take the doors off. Just something I wasn't thinking about, but yeah, that makes it a lot easier to work on. All right, so let me go get the laptop, check the tune on that, and then I'll get you guys caught up. Well, I got the laptop hooked up, uh, loaded up a base map, gave us more cranks, and I sprayed a little bit of ether in there, still wasn't getting anything, and I just thought to myself, I gotta quit chasing my tail. I'm gonna sit here and waste time trying to get this thing to just give me a burp. And what I really need to focus on is just doing work that I can do while I'm here. And uh, not waste my time on silly things like putting wheels on here that look so freaking good. Oh my god, look at it! Oh! <laughs> Cannot wait till those things are ripping on all four wheels. Holy crap, that looks so good. Oh, oh, but anyway, yeah, I don't want to waste time doing stuff that's not important. I want to focus on what is important. So, uh, I was going to go ahead and also I was going to trim out the hole there to do the shifter and go ahead and mount all that stuff up. The Sawzall was dead. He's got a battery powered Sawzall, uh, DeWalt one, and uh, both batteries are completely flat. So that's not going to work. So while those are charging, I'm going to start getting these out of the box. We'll see how, how things go. I'm going to put on some of the hip and the hop music and get to work. Jeez, well. So with the back wheel off, we can see what's all going on here. Uh, these things are really not that hard to take apart, and this one's not rusty at all, so that should be a pretty swift taking apart of all this stuff. Uh, the one thing is, is so I'm talking to Sone at S1, I wasn't quite sure what brand these coilovers were, so I don't have the hardware to hook up the coilover, I don't think, to the lower control arm may still work. Well, I won't have axle, so yeah, I can still run that. That should be fine still. So I'll be able to take this whole swing arm assembly off, take the hub brake hub off, the caliper, all that good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and start disassembling this side just to see kind of how it goes. The sway bar and all that crap off too. This wasn't SI because it has a sway bar. 
don't worry, Civic, or don't worry, CRX, you're gonna have a great life. You're going to get all the credit you deserve. And that was one thing about this, one thing about every, every car that I see. If you don't remember the backstory, this was bound for the junkyard. It was on the way to the junkyard. And I said, no, 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 drop it off at my house. I can make something out of that. And that's that means a lot to me to try to save a CRX, especially one in this good condition. This one much much, much heritage behind it. And it's just, uh, I want to bring it back to life. Way better than it ever could have been, especially scrap value. So anyway, never rants. Let's tell you, tear this apart. The uh, first swing arm's off. Pretty painless, except for this freaking caliper getting completely seized to that dr or the, uh, disc. That thing would not come off there, so I let it spaset with a little bit of PB Blaster. Hopefully, that'll come out a little easier. Everything else came out pretty good. Oh, it's actually energy bushing in there. That's a good aftermarket bushing. Sweet. It seems like it's all coated in anti seize because everything came out really, really simply and really cleanly. Knock on CRX that keeps happening, but everything's coming out. I'm gonna grab the uh, S1 swing arm and see what I got to transfer over. You can see here just the beautiful difference between the S1 and the factory one. Now when I was having to take all this stuff apart, this caliper is pretty seized up and it really needs to be rebuilt and I've, I'll put that on the list. I'm not gonna worry about it of course this time just because I'm putting all this stuff together and those are really easy to swap out. So I will go ahead and put them on here just for uh, peace of mind and so I can go ahead and get that out of the way. I got the dog bone on the front end of it. It doesn't come with a captive nut on the back of this, so I had to find a nut, just like your mom. And everything else, I'm gonna get this up in there and uh, get it all bolted up. And look what's in. It is all good to go. And it's in. It's all in. For the first time. Why well, do get so tight all of a sudden? This stupid caliper is awful. But anyway, you see, I got a room for my axle. Uh, kit went in well. Looks good. I was able to get the uh, e-brake cable back on, the uh, brake line on. So, uh, like I said earlier, we're gonna get this all figured out on the uh, as far as the new fork for the strut. I got it on the top setting that actually gives you a little more ground clearance. It seems, if I'm correct in thinking. Wait. Yeah, because if you put it on the other setting, it push it higher up in there. But yeah, it went in great, went in well, and it's a really beefy unit, and it looks so good in there. All right, that's side number two. On there and uh, good to go. Caliper was a little bit easier this time around. One thing, uh, one trick I did notice. So this e-brake, uh, I guess cable holder, it was preventing, it was actually hitting the uh, swing arm here and it was not letting me get the caliper lined up with this top bolt. So I had to take that off, which shouldn't be a big deal. I may be able to route it around that way instead. I'll check out the other side, went in fine afterwards but this one may be a little bit different maybe I can, like i said maybe I just route it around the inside there i'll have to kind of mess around with it and see what i can find out it's kind of dark but i did get one bolt in there it's up at an angle it's still hitting that but i was able to drive it in there deep enough to where it's definitely not going to go anywhere got the pin back in and it's not exactly how uh honda designed it to work but it's gonna uh, work the only thing i was noticing is that it's gonna be kind of clanky and the other side is a little bit louder. So I may have to come up with some kind of bracket and actually bolt this to it. Unless there's something on the inside, which there might be. Not a big deal. There is a little bit of metal to metal contact there. So I will kind of keep an eye on that for future, uh, future shin digging. But I th I'll just keep an eye on that for the future. If I hear some rattling noises, I'm sure I'm gonna hear a lot of rattling noises anyway. We're good to go. You can see there's a couple of nuts here missing. I know I gotta address that, but I don't have the the nuts. Yeah, yeah, I, you heard me correctly. I don't have the nuts. So on to the next. I think what I need to go ahead and do is take the sway bar off. Well, I got to look at the rest of the kit and I decided there's a lot of welding and a lot of uh, stuff down the line. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but I think a good stopping point for the weekend on the CRX would be to go ahead and hang the rear diff. 
It's cool as you can see right down Main Street there, you can see the uh, transmission and the uh, transfer case. So in order to do that, you gotta cut out this middle here of this. And then I gotta cut out these hangers too here, which is not a big deal either. Take out this tow hook on the back side. And uh, I'll be able to get that up and I can get it ready to tack weld. Cause that's got, so the way they want you to do it is this has locator holes here where the uh, sway bar was. And that's your locator holes. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll bolt it up for now. But uh, what they really suggest, what someone says is to go ahead and weld it in. So I'll clean all that up with a wire brush eventually and get that all fully welded in. But just getting it bolted in this weekend will suffice for what I want to do. Because uh, another thing is, is that we'll go to here. And once you get it all located here and then on these bolts here, you'll go ahead and tack weld that in and then take it off, fully weld it up and put it back in the, the uh, on the car. And then you can go ahead and weld these on. Plan on getting that far this weekend as long as, as far as that's concerned. It's kind of late already, it's already 10.30. Which I mean, it's not super late, but. <laughs> As you saw on the time lapse, that's it. The diff is mounted. But man, that's starting to look so good. It's starting to actually come together. The all drive stuff is starting to line up. And boys, we're about to be in business here. That's looking good. I got the cut up here. Uh, there's a big cut here already from when they did the, uh, I guess they did a, a different fuel pump or they just changed the fuel pump, made a quick, quick little exit there so they could change it out quickly. But, that is it. I got the two bolts here. There's a bracket that goes up here. There's a bar that goes across here to mount to the top of the diff. So that's gonna be super secure. Uh, ben from HRG Engineering, my best friend who did help me, uh, sponsor me the lift on the wagon. He sent me the uh, dual pump delete plates that go in this. So this will be actually a true rear end, a true diff with the uh, viscous coupler from the Freelander. So on that note, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it an evening. I uh, accomplished what I wanted to do and it's, uh, it's still not even 11 o'clock yet. So I still beat the time. I wasn't up too late past my curfew. You know, I'm an old man now. Uh, but that's, that's going to do it for the CRX for this evening. Uh, the shifting stuff, the shifter stuff, I'll get taken care of next time. Uh, next time you see me work on the CRX, I want to have it started. I, I think if I get that and I get the correct hubs and everything on here, we should be able to pull it forward and backwards in and out of the garage. And I think that would be a humongous step because after that, it's just drive shaft, rear axles, and we're four wheel drive boys. We're ready to go. And this thing is going to be, it's going to be killer. I cannot wait. The more I do on it, the more I get excited. And it's a, uh, there's a flurry of activities going on right now. Uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up tonight and get my hammock set up and I'm going to bed. See you guys.